Tic Tac, our co-commentator here, here to give us moral support, I think? Emotional or demotivational <laughs> yeah. support, well, however know, you want to look at it. Uh, but we are going to be getting into game one here. It will be Rainmaker on Sturgeon Shipyard. And looking at the compositions, a GooTuber has indeed come out. And on the and opposite Swiffer? side of that, a fresh Squiffer. What? Both weapons I, we talked about, didn't expect to see them in this game. Um, yeah, this is an interesting set, to say the least. I... Some, did they agree on something before this? <laughs> um, looks like they're a pretty even start. I, purple can get in the pot, but still going down. One for each. I do want to talk, too, about the Soda Slosher. The Soda Slosher is sort of the answer to a lot of Slosher players saying, hey, we want a Burst Bomb in some capacity. And they were like, okay, have a Burst Bomb rush. And sometimes it's not as effective as you might think. You do have to hit those directs pretty consistently. Otherwise, you're only getting 35 or maybe even 25 damage per bomb. Mm -hmm. Although I will say it does shut down things really well. Mm -hmm. um, also, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't take this match seriously. We have a GooTuber <laughs> in here. Uh, power making oh, the jump. It. Is this going to be the KO? Oh my gosh, I thought he didn't oh make my it up. Goodness, but as this... three players are down, they will end up getting the very quick dunk. So we didn't get to see too much of an engagement between the GooTuber and the Fresh Squiffer. But apparently GooTuber reigning supreme here. I mean... Just, just using the GooTuber is already a statement, and power showing him what's up. It again, no pun intended, is a power move, saying, oh. hey, I'm willing to bring in this GooTuber, and there's nothing you can do to stop me. Power, I thought he was going to miss that sponge. I thought they were able to get enough enemy ink on the sponge that it wouldn't be enough height for him to get the jump off onto the ramp, but just barely by the skin of his tentacles and was able to climb up. We see there it does look like he falls, which is a way the game fall prediction trying to make it so you don't look like you're falling, but it usually doesn't work, which mm -hmm. makes you look like you're falling. So it's pretty <laughs> funny. Uh, and spectator cam sees that a lot. So if you see j weird janky stuff, it's probably spectator cam and not actually happening to the players. So, so this uh, game one, unfortunately, didn't give us too great a dynamic of how these two teams are going to be matching up against each other. We didn't see too many team fights. We did see a five kill and a four kill uh, effort put in by two players from Steel Shot. So that is going to be, uh, or for the win, or for the what I believe. So that's going to be a really good start for them. Um, and we'll be going on to Tower Control Snapper Canal for game two, which I, I love describing this map because you start at the top and then as you go down to mid, you sort of lose a lot of that sight line and a lot of that visibility that you have from spawn. Mm -hmm. I actually think Tower Control Snapper is probably one of the most tower control maps because it's got a little bit of everything that you have this, the first part, which is kind of chargers and heavies really shut down that first checkpoint and holding mid is a bit different compared to the other snapper variations. Um, the second checkpoint is kind of like if all the frontliners come together and kind of duke it out around there with the chargers and spotlings being a little bit. And the final checkpoint is just all out chaos because you're so close to spawn and all the frontliners have above high ground. It's madness. So kind of goes from this kind of organized, you know, startup and slowly just gets worse and worse as you get closer <laughs> to the goal. So we are going to be going into game two. I do like that this map has certain areas that you can either choose never to touch for the entire game or you can have fun little additional team fights. It's going to be those rectangles on the very left-hand bottom and very right-hand top side of the screen that are pretty much optional at this point. But as far as the compositions go, a lot more meta this time around. For For the What, we are seeing the Slosher Deco <gasps> come out as well as the mini Splatling, but the Slosher Deco is going to be made quick work of. Now, power going down here is very important because this first checkpoint is really difficult to get by with a Charger still present. But two going down means we're just going to stall out in neutral. So... Ooh, Steel Shot had a Stingray ready, but their Heavy Splatling is going to fall, as well as their Kensa Sloshing Machine. So that's two specials that they had at their disposal oh, gone wait. already. Tic Tac is... Oh, wait, Tic Tac? Uh, he's already in their base, but I thought Tic Tac was playing for uh, Demise. <laughs> Unless this isn't Tic Tac? It is not Tic Tac. We have an imposter in We our do part. have an imposter. Uh, <laughs> and I was about to say, even with uh, Chargers... Going over to Sloshing Machine is a pretty easy transition for a lot of them, especially if you're using the regular one that still has that Stingray. But in this case, we are seeing instead two Kensa Sloshing Machines. The Splashdown has gotten a couple of retunements and buffs that have made it relatively viable. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's still, it's not a good special, but it is a, for what it does, it's fine. Serviceable. Yeah. It, it doesn't help you push or anything, but it could save you. Or stop. It's actually now, 
It is basically the anti-everything. It destroys anything with armor, bubbles, uh, booyahs, ballers, you name it. Yeah, I think it's essentially the closest thing we have to a panic button special in this game. You just kind of pop it when you think you're about to die or when you're right on top of somebody. Power able to survive as well. That's really important as he has that Stingray. You do want your long-range backline players to be on the tower generally because they can still have an effect on the team fight from all the way back on the objective. Mm -hmm. I also want to notice, notice, please notice how Toon and Power are pairing up a ton here. The combo of, oh, Slash Mission doing a bit of work, but the combo of Brella, specifically Undercover, and Charger is incredible because let's say your Charger gets in trouble, you just chuck a torpedo and suddenly the problems just disappear. It also uh, sort of acts as like a walking shield. Just yeah. say, okay, get, it's kind of small, but get behind this shield and you might be able to survive. Mm -hmm. Especially against other Chargers because now you can just take another hit. Tower just barely able to survive that 10 missile barrage. We have seen the tower get up to, but not clearing that first checkpoint at around 80. They do lose two of their members, so that push probably going to be dead in the water. Splashdown being expended by purpose to stay alive, but it's not going to matter as Power ready for that and was able to get him on the descent. Whew. Looks like a classic backline stalemate. <laughs> oh, never mind. We got a fizzy. Um, yeah, it looks like, I, I feel like FTW's probably just going to try to hold, oh, uh, never mind, they're going to go in. Here we go. Prin, oh. not deterred by the mini spotling nerf, still going to be using it here. Two down on the side of Steel Shot, and they will have the Stingray at their disposal to try and use here, but they're for the most part coming out of spawn. So for the what, already with a push to 20, looking to excel and exceed that already. Yeah, Kyo, oh no, I think it's time for spawn camping. Ten points left, and uh, I think that's going to be game. We've got two specials out, and there it is. I mean, our number one seed showing why they're number one here. Yeah, kind of an underrated topic that we haven't really discussed is special economy. Saving it for only the most applicable of situations, which that is going to mean that sometimes you'll die with your special, but oftentimes it's better to just not risk it and run something like a little bit of special saver like you were talking about earlier and just have it for the next team fight as opposed to just throwing it away and then having absolutely nothing, having to work through all of that uh, turf to get into the next team fight or maybe two team fights after that. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking the best example of a weapon with that is with any ink armor. You never ever want to use your ink armor as a panic special just for yourself. Mm -hmm. It is always to be used when you have four people up in a, maybe at least one other special because it just pairs so well with everything and using it by yourself is 100% a waste and you're still going to die. It doesn't solve anything for you. You're just dead. But when you use it with a team, even after dying, it does tremendous work. Yeah, and I think Stingray too, one of the most obvious ones. I mean, most Stingray oh. players will even jump back to their spawn and while you can't use it directly in your spawn anymore, uh, you are still able to just pop out just a little bit outside of the little spawn bubble and then use it. So they don't want to use it anywhere outside of that area unless they know that they're either completely safe or they have umbrella pocketing them. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we actually, oh, we have one more match to play, I forgot. I thought this was already over. <laughs> <laughs> a it's little about bit to be. presumptuous there. I don't know, man. I, I know these guys. I've played against them a ton, and uh, I don't think anyone's making it out of this tournament alive. True. So. I mean, thankfully, you just saw Steel Shot on the camera there. Not too deterred. They look like they're still having a good time. Mm -hmm. For the what, pretty concentrated, pretty uh, focused on the match, and that's good. It's better for them to not get too cocky in the early stages and make sure that this is good practice to make sure that for the later stages they won't have expended all of their you know focus or even just throw one of these matches to just because they're not taking it seriously mm -hmm. side thing can we just take appreciate bob's fabulous oh, suit this always. man every tournament wears some kind of crazy looking suit and i think this this one is hands down he's got sparkles and everything like how do you beat that? Who, who can outclass him at this event? I don't think you can see it on stream, but not only his jacket, but his bow tie oh, as well. I didn't even is notice sequined. that. Both of those are sequined. Dang, that anyway, is fabulous. Uh, we, are, we are in game three now. For the what, looking to take a 3-0 and Steel Shot looking to start what could be a reverse sweep. Perps in a little bit of a bad situation. We have seen a couple of changes here, namely a Fire Fin Splatter Scope replacing the Stingray version. And we also have a Kensa Dynamo Roller coming out from Steel Shot. I yeah, get into this. All these dynamo. Oh, no, there's a hammer. Oh, oh no more hammer. nice shutdown. Oh, three down. They are going to almost have 10, it looks like, which means we might be able to see a push here. Um, but about the dynamo, we've been seeing a lot of dynamos. Like, man, I I don't know what it is. Dynamo's not a bad weapon, honestly. And the, all the kits are pretty solid, especially this Booyah Bomb one. Also, two, three Booyah Bombs coming out from Steel Shot. 
Just, just going to note that now. And that's something that I noticed in the Dummy Thick versus Loki esports matches. They were often throwing two, sometimes three Booyah Bombs in front of the pedestal at the same time. But 2D here going to be able to get a quick pop of the barrier. Not too much follow-up on top of that. We do see a couple of people sharking around by the barrier, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough. They do have one jumping in with the splashdown. They are going to lose their power claim by throwing it in. A great job there, and they've actually forced a three-down situation, so I don't think this is quite over. Mm -hmm. Fake Tic Tac there doing good work. Um, and yet, again, it's not done yet. Oh, a great bomb. A nice double cleanup there. And it still has special. Now they just need to get mid back, and hopefully they can do something here. Yeah, so for those of y'all who didn't know, that was a great exhibition of throwing a bomb right up against the splash wall, which also, another thing that got buffed in this mm -hmm. most recent patch, uh, but that will have an instant detonation time instead of having the normal weight. Mm -hmm. And interesting trade there, losing the special, not good for that uh, custom scroll choose player. But um, about the wall, received a five frame speed up, which is a lot more than it sounds. Oh no, we've got a hammer. Is it gonna, oh, they gonna get him. And good teamwork there to clean up that hammer. Um, yeah, it sort of feels like the strategy for taking on a hammer is the same as taking on umbrella. If you have two people, you should put one in the front, one in the back, and generally you can clean them up without too much hassle. All right, here comes our Booyah Bombers. Um, one going to clean them out of Snipe. Probably going to see another one shortly. Fake Tic Tac, probably going to try to splash down them? Oh, maybe get the... Oh. oh. He, ah, he got one, kind of. Oh, wait, it's a 1v1. Oh, power with power. the bombers there. Oh, nice and pick victory. onto Prin, and they will stay alive. It is going to be effectively three down on both sides. I think oh, for the nice what mainly tap. held too. Thankfully there for them, Perps was a little bit damaged, so they didn't require a full shot in order to take them out. That's a good early pick, and another full charge pick. Looking for the third, it's not going to happen. Oh, but they will get another. One Can he get the Prin. last one? Let's wait. He's going to get it. No, but his teammate will clean it up. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This, this is why power is number one, folks. We talk uh, about Splatoon veterans. Power has not let those chargers go, and it shows. Oh, if he gets one here, uh, unlucky. But you know what? It, it happens sometimes. Tic fake Tic Tac going to get clean up the double. So let's see if he can get the clams in. They have like a two-down situation on a steel shot here. They will need to advance as quickly as possible. They are throwing them in from that range, which I thought might not be able to work. <gasps> and a great direct there is going to take the down perps. Follow-up assist. Knocking down their back line. Can they get the rest, though? Oh, those fizzy bombs. Oh, no. So oh, no. I think this might be game. They, they're going to need... Oh, no. They have all the clams needed. And that is going to be the game. Oh, they just need oh, one, one more. more. Oh, and power drive. That, power going yep. for it. There, it's a two-down situation. That will finish it off. 2D getting the final clam. And for the what, even against the second seed in their pool, showing why they're both the number one seed in D2 and the number one seed overall. Mm -hmm. And maybe even the world, if they can win E3. Potentially. Um, yeah, looking at those K uh, KAs here, Toon, I think, Kyo tic fake Tic Tac just bodied everyone. Both going, I think that was 15 and 15? 12 and 12. 12 and 12. 